Hello everybody, thank you so much for stopping back at the Cranberry Cornstalk YouTube channel. Yes, we're still making candles. It is that time of year with the festivals and we sell out so quickly so we're trying to get ahead of the game. Like I said in the last video, we have eight in a row so I won't have time to you know race home and make some more in between if I sell out of stock. So I'm trying to be prepared. Some of this um, you already know how we make the candles here at the cranberry corn stock but in case you haven't seen the other videos this is just an overview of the wax this is the pillar wax in the warmer with our bees wax that is how we make our wax melts and that's what I'm going to show you today I have some wax melts in the clamshells and I also wanted to show you a little snippet of how I pour the nubbin candles with the wick that hangs also i've made some pumpkins for the festivals and i gave you a few clips of that um, so that's what we're going to make today and if you haven't done so yet and you like our channel please hit subscribe share and hit that little bell for future notifications so that you'll be notified every time we release a video we try to release our videos somewhere between tuesday and wednesday within those two days that seems to be our schedule and we just thank you so much for stopping back at the cranberry cornstalk youtube channel be sure to check out our website you can purchase a lot of the items you see here on youtube And if you wish to go to the website, it is www.the-cranberry-cornstalk.myshopify.com and we also have an Etsy page. It's th cranberry cornstalk at etsy.com. You can go there on Etsy and type us in and you should find us there. First thing I'm going to do is show you how I wick the nubbins candles that's the little nubbin trims from the bottom of a old time candlestick a taper candle they used to burn them down until there was they couldn't get to the bottom part that was held in the container and they would throw the little nubbins in a bowl to remelt for future use to make more candles and these nubbins are very popular in primitive decor right now they're great for a bowl filler um, that type of thing or you can just hang nubbins together in a grouping on a doorknob on a kitchen cabinet things like that I'm just showing you here how I thread the wick I just measure the wick the length of the mold with some extra on the bottom and the top and this is probably the hardest part of making these I dislike making the nubbins so much because it takes so much work to get the threading through I just don't have a really good system yet and yes, you'll see in my video that there is black wax on everything. The nice thing about my prims, everything is black wax. I don't change the color. It's my black and beeswax, and I make everything out of it. So all my molds are fine to have little crumbs or little leftover stains from the black wax, and I don't even mind. But in this video, I'm going to make a real mess. You'll see the mess I make. I'm As I go, I'm learning how to do things a little nicer. I have a funnel coming to... Um, melt my wax into the molds which will be great I've seen other candle makers use that and it's just not so much dripping all all over the place my big pot that I use is very hard to control the wax and I have a lot of spillage which is so annoying and you can see that's why I have the brown paper down just to catch everything and then I could just uh, leave it down roll it up when I'm finished and be done but these are one of the hardest candles I make just because of the threading. Um, another hard one are the tapers. They're very difficult to make. So uh, it's frustrating, but if you watch here, I, you know, the more you do it, I think the better you can get at it. 
I just have a piece of wire that is wrapped around the end of the wick. I've measured out all the wicks as you saw, the length of, that I need, and I'll just thread it through in, all in one piece. Um, there's no point in threading each candle individually because that wouldn't, that would kind of be difficult to keep trimming them. I think this works better. That's just for my trial and error. If you guys have a better way of doing this, more, please, uh, I am more than open to suggestions. Um, I just go back and forth and thread each uh, nubbin candle by itself. Sometimes to get started, this mold is a newer mold. It's a nicer mold. It's one of the silicone ones. But if you've checked out the price of them, they're super expensive. So I'm going to start with one and we'll see how long I can get away with just one of these molds. But it does make a few nubbins. It's not too bad. Um, but the holes are still really tight. So sometimes I have to work to get the wick through the hole in the first place. And the trick with this is you don't really want to make the hole too big because you remember you're pouring hot wax in there. And the way it is now, as long as it's just a little slit or a tiny hole, it will form back together and close that hole up. So um, when you make the bigger hole to get your wick through, that ends up being uh, just a place for your wax to melt out. So you just kind of have to um, give and take a little bit and see where you want. Again, that's experience. That's just a matter of doing it over and over and over again. I feel like I've done it enough, but I'm still learning. I don't think I ever stop learning. If I could find a better way to needle the wick through, that would be good. Right now, I just use a wire and again, I just wrap it onto the wick and pull it through. That way it works. It's just that my wire's soft. Maybe I'll try to find a harder wire and just bend it around, but then you get to where the wire doesn't hold the wick tight and you lose it when you're pushing it through. So that's just the issues I run into with uh, threading the wick through this mold. If you guys have any ideas, please, by all means, let us all know a better way to do this. Again, like I said, so I'm just gonna let you watch the video. Now that you have all your molds ready, your wax should be melted, and you want to try to pour your scent in. I normally pour mine around 175. It's hot enough that it blends, but it's cool enough that it doesn't burn off. Again, you can see here I have black wax splattered on everything. I used to wipe it all off every single time and clean up as I went, but I had just had so many candles to make in a hurry this day. I know it seems like that's a running theme with me, isn't it? I had so many candles to make this day and I didn't wipe it off until the end of the day. Everything was still warm and easy to wipe down, but um, that's a tip for you if you're making candles or melting wax, just wipe everything down with a paper towel when you're finished and it comes off really easy if you wait then it'll be on there until the next time but I do make everything in my shop in black and beeswax so and it's not even that much of a change in the wax as I have beeswax and everything and I might change from paraffin to uh, 464 soy wax to burn so that's about the extent of what I do and as I'm pouring here, I want you to notice how much I spill. It's enough to drive me crazy. But I did see a funnel that I want to purchase. You, it's a little funnel and you just open the bottom of it and it squirts enough wax and the holes just perfectly and there's virtually no spilling of the wax. It's amazing and I have one ordered. I can't wait to get it. I got it online. I'm looking forward to that. Another tip to let you know from what I've discovered, if your pan is too full, it will do this. I was, like I said, trying to hurry, trying to get a lot done at one time, and my pan was so full that it just seemed like I was up against it all day. I was trying to pour, and I was spilling everywhere, and it just, 
it just it's not worth hurrying and racing i'm sometimes we get ourselves in the predicaments we get a lot of orders or I've, I've been selling a lot lately of this type of candle and i can't seem to make them fast enough but i was um my pan was too full when your pan's too full this is what happens your pouring pan but i will show you i can't wait to show you the funnel that i receive i've been watching people use it and it's really nice so that's just another tip keep your pan i would say half when i when i have my melted wax pan at halfway i don't spill like this like i did this day These are some of the other things that I made. I dipped some pomegranates into the black and beeswax, dusted them in cinnamon. They've been a hot seller this year as well. Aren't they beautiful? They're so prim and so pretty. They just have a tint of red to them. And here's um, the candles that I pulled out of the molds. I showed you the pumpkins and the nubbins, and this is what they look like after they've been dusted with cinnamon. I put a pretty heavy coat of cinnamon on them because they get worn on the bags and in shipping and it comes off a lot so you you might want to go a little heavy on the cinnamon you know before shipping and before the craft shows as well and then i'm just going to package them up and i like to seal them i mean they look nicer when they aren't in plastic but for the customer's sake when they're sealed 
the scent doesn't dissipate from the wax and when they open that bag it's so fresh and they do take time to cure a good week for sure some people say two weeks but when you give it that time it has a chance to the oils seem to work better and they they just sell smell so much stronger and I think it's the right thing to do for the customer um, to keep that scent to them I mean sure we like our craft shops and everything to smell good but they're the ones that are purchasing and I hate to take that wonderful scent from them when it can cure for a week and be even stronger you know for their sake so I'm just labeling them packaging them up labeling them and I do stick a price tag on them my regular prims that are not really meant for melting or these are just for looks these these little bunt little bunt I don't even want to say they're bitty cakes they're not even little cakes they're just bitty cakes that's what we'll call them I have a scent a candle scent that's called bitty cakes it smells like regular vanilla cake but these are just for looks they're the dusted little bunt cakes the bitty cakes I just um, put a basic scent on all of them it's just a prim scent it's kind of got a coffee scent to it but it smells like an old-fashioned um, maybe an old-fashioned household smell so they don't really get scented with a specific uh, flavor for the bowl fillers but I do scent them for sure just nothing like I don't offer varieties it's just too difficult there's too many of them I love to see them in a bowl and I from what I see I believe you guys do as well um, and they sell really well with this scent so I just call it the prim farmhouse scent I think is what I've, I've referred to it in the past but I'll just let you watch how I package them up 